Hello, the game has started. It's me to go first. Not a great rack, certainly not bingo-y. Too many vowels and two U's, particularly problematic. So, should I change? I, I don't think so. I think meow is a better play than than changing. URE is not worth minus 12. And I'm just wincing, bearing in mind the minus two for each floater provided rule of thumb. So I think this is probably a close run thing. And I think I'll switch this to MUE to put a better vowel in underneath the double letter square. Okay, this looks a lot closer to a bingo, uneasier through an I. I'm not seeing a seven here, although there could be one. So what about the other floaters? How about the M username? Wow, that may stay available if opponent starts a parallel play. Ah, oh, and he doesn't. Okay, that's a shame. Username is one of those tricky words which is very easy to miss. So, what is new? OX, not promising for a nine letter play. MO, so it could end MOUS. No, not seeing anything. So, how can I get rid of E and U? Everything else is worth preserving. And is there really nothing through this E? Well, not that I can see. And how can I get value from OX? Well, my N can go above it. So what about playing EN? 19 points. Not the worst rack leave in the world. Can I extend this in either direction? I don't think I can. I'm going with this. Right, well, this certainly does look bingo-y. And I'm hesitating about unraise. Don't feel good about that. It's possible... There is no bingo here, but if there is and I miss it, it's massively high probability. Sarni, S-A-R-N-I-E, is one of the best six-letter stems for finding bingos. And I think there is a bingo with the U. Is it on raise? Possibly. I'm just imagining this rack with a D when you have denarius, uranides, and unraised. Okay, Brent. Well, let's let's find out. Nope, unraised not good. So does it have an anagram? And opponent's play provides no new floaters. So if it's not unraise, what would it be? I am thinking that there isn't a play. And I'm minded to change just the U, given how strong the rest of the rack is. Is there anywhere I can just play the U to good effect? No, I don't think so. So I'm changing just the U. Okay, did that work? Okay, well I thought I had. My time's still ticking down, so let me try this again. Okay, well I guess I may have changed the U and drawn a U.
So what if opponent changes? Well, I guess I'm in the same position as before, and therefore if my previous move was the right one, I should do it again. But I'm slightly puzzled by the glitches that appeared to be. Maybe I haven't changed a U and drawn a U. Maybe I've just effectively passed. But no floaters on this board. That's really problematic when you've got a Bingui rack. It's hugely beneficial to have floaters. Okay, so there now is a P. What does that make with this rack? I don't think it makes anything. The H not a floater. Unpraise it makes, which doesn't fit. So I can play up for eight, and that's forking the board. I have a bingo lane in column four, and I also have a bingo lane in row K. I'm going with this. Well, I draw another U, so I changed a U and drew a U. I then played a U and drew a U. Pretty extreme drawing skills. Now, I'm just back from Sweden a few days ago. Had an absolutely amazing time out there. And there is a vlog of that trip, which is up on the channel. So do take a look at that if you're interested in the tournament scene, which has just reopened following all the lockdowns that we've had. And also available for Patreon subscribers is a supporters is a brand new five minute game and it's a particularly exciting one so do check that out if you are a Patreon. So what's happening in this crazy game? Floating eye no good. New bingo lane column three for a seven letter bingo. Well I don't have one. I'm just wondering about changing you and I, given that there's a floating I. Let's see what happens here. So I have Dawners and Wonders, and one of those will surely play. They could both be blocked if opponent plays a six or seven letter play in column three. I would have answered through an E. Now, what about the I? Does that give me an 8? No, I don't think it does. Now, of the two choices at the moment, Dawners in column 3, or Dawners or Wonders in row K, row K gets doubled, so that certainly is my preference. And how to choose between Dawners and Wonders. I think it would have to be Dawners to avoid placing a four-point tile above a double word square. So I trail by 40, opponent on turn, so I could be a bingo behind. Now Brent takes a Y in front, and if opponent sticks a Y in front, Brent no longer takes an S. Great, only 18 points for opponent. He has provided a new spot for Dawners, the highest scoring spot, but it does open up access to triple word squares, so. I am playing here. For 80, and that's pretty good. I have a raises. And that does play in column two at the moment. And I don't see any other lanes where a raises plays. Great, that remains available. So do I have anything better through the floaters? O and I look like too many vowels to make a bingo. How about the N? 
No, not seeing anything there. So a raise is for 67. Pretty good. I have dust rag. Does that play? Well, yes, at the moment it does in column one, but I'm not expecting that to remain available. I have gardens in... No, that can't possibly be right. That's a nine. Yeah, I would need another A for that to play through the end. So what about out drags? Gosh, tempting. I think it's good, but is it? Opponent has blocked my dust rag spot. And there's nowhere else. Inti takes nothing in front. No other seven letter lanes. So I think out drags might be good, or is good rather. I'm not seeing anything with the I. How about the N? No. So out drags for 72, and look at this for a pickup. Absolutely insane. I think I've had three back to back bingos, and now this is the fourth random rack that I face. I'm not considering triple triples at the moment. Opponent is surely likely to take that. So what about row O ending in N? I would have the Asian ending. So I have Venation. That's good. Where else should I consider? Not not many out not many other places. Well I guess I have Atonis in column eleven. Quite nice, but it does put the I next to this triple letter square. And oh my word, opponent has left column fifteen alone. So this rack plus an S, do I have a triple triple? I certainly have a bingo because I have Astonis. I keep on thinking of nines, botanizes. But let me, 13 minutes on my clock, let me see if anything comes to mind. So, botanies, botanize, obeisant, and there is a fourth. What is the fourth one? Probably the one which goes. Botanies, botanies, obeisant, niobates. Okay, well, that doesn't go. Now, this surely makes a bingo with an S. Wow, I'm not seeing it, though. 12 minutes on my clock. So I have venation or indeed Astonis in column 15, so I'm just looking for a better bingo here. But a triple-triple would be a much better bingo. Gosh, so many of these racks look like they surely must make something, but then the plays are not coming to mind. Still half the alphabet to go, so elations and toenails insulate and one other again so this rack plus an S somniate misotone and I think there may be maybe more Okay, so this rack plus an S. Fortunately, I do have the time for this exercise. So, Senorita, Rosinate, Anoestri. Wow, that's close. Arsenite, Notares. That's a Stonies. Does that have an anagram? Not that I can see. Uh, 
Okay, Saxonite. Okay, so I haven't seen a play, a triple-triple in column 15. Let me just consider possible endings. So it could end ED. It could end IS. ED, so something like atonized. Nope, not seeing anything. Could end SON. No. Okay, well, I think I do need to play to make a play ending in S. And I only lead by 80, so do I have anything which begins with a tricky letter like a C or a V? And I'm reluctant to place a vowel next to this triple letter square, so Aconites doesn't work, and Canoeist stops one square short of the bottom. Is there an anagram, a third anagram of Aconites? Wow, what a tricky spot to be in. I certainly do want to play in column 15. I think I'm going to play Nio Bates. No, I'm not. That would place an A next to this triple letter square with a Z to come. So what about the... What about toenails? Same problem, A next to this triple letter square. Well, I'm going to go with no tears. I think the only danger is a Q and that's not going to be hit twice. Oh, well, I might as well just play notaries in that spot. So notaries for 74. Did I miss a triple triple? Okay, well, I think the bingo run ends after four with this rack, but it's quite a nice rack. Looks like it has scoring potential. Amy takes an R in front. If I played off all of my scoring tiles, the rack leave would be pretty good. So is there anywhere for half? I think in a real tournament I would actually have spent even longer than I did in column 15. The rack I had was pretty amazing. Wow, look at this. There's a spot for double F under O and E of Oboe. But Deb only takes an E, so I could play F. 42 points, not bad, and the H is not a terrible scoring tile to retain. I am going with this. Well, C and H go well together. What are the floaters? Just wondering about Chiragra. What am I confusing that with? Nothing at all, it's good. Good grief. That's through the R of out drags. Will that stay available? Wow. So often, or not so often, but sometimes when words come to mind, it's because there's a similar word which, which has caused some confusion, but not in this case. And it's not an obvious spot to block. Opponent probably does have his mind on bingoing to reduce his deficit. Still one R to come for Rami. Plus the one on my rack. I guess there 
Ah, oh, fantastic. Chiragra remains available. And the H gets doubled. Bang! Fantastic. Look at this. Over 240 point lead. And this isn't a terrible rack. J and K for score. And a decent number of vowels. So I have Duke on my rack, which would play in column 11. Still the Q and Z to come, so all of the big tiles late to the party, apart from the X. And I still have the R for Rami. What goes in front of Rin? Well, nothing that I've got. So I can't play Jerk in that spot. Or Jarp, which would have been fun. So, do I have a play? Oh, well, I have Duke parallel to no notaries. That's probably preferable to column 11. If I play in column 11, opponent can score off the J. That won't be the case in column 14. Wow, 86 points for Charagra. Fantastic. And opponent leaves that Duke spot alone. So I have Duke for 37. Wow, pretty good. I draw the blank, I draw the Z, I dodge the Q. I'm only short on vowels. And I have an R for Rami. And again, does anything go in front of Rin that I've got? Well, no, but I have the blank. So what does go in front of Rin? G. I think that's it. Possibly B. Bryn. Not sure about that. So, what can I do with the Z? This will be my last rack. I was looking at the A of Dorners. But any play which gets the Z to play twice will require the blank to be used. And I think I'll be looking to go out in, in two. Plus blocking any Q spots that opponent might have. And Duke may have blocked his play of QI. Well, that wasn't intentional, but it's certainly useful if that is the case. Chiragra takes an S, so... Do I have any plays bottom right, which involve the Z? Spiz not good. No, I don't. The most, the best I can do there is slip. Twenty nine points, and then I won't be going out in one. I have Dursey in column eleven, and I would then have L and P. Alp, bottom of column 13. Piley in row F. Ah, our opponent does have just the cue. He's got catalogue and gel coat. Just need to be careful here. There could be a sneaky peaky lane available. Column 11, for example. Could end E, E or E, O. Okay, the bingos, the two bingos I've mentioned don't go there. So, do I play Dursey? Let me see what this looks like. It's 32 points. My only concern is if I'm providing a bingo for opponent. So, catalogue plus a D, no. Plus a U, no. An R, no. Five minutes on my clock, nine on opponents. I haven't checked the time for a while. This may not be best. Let me just put this back. That is a Z play for my back pocket. 
Where else? What about column one? No. But just any Z spots on the board. I've identified this A of Dorners. Wow, what a dry board for Zs. Yeah, I think I am going to play Dursey. Even if opponent has a bingo, it's not going to be enough for him to win. Okay, I don't feel great about that play. I may have given opponent the opportunity to score in column 12, even without a bingo, a lot more than he would have done had I have played elsewhere. Opponent passes. I don't really understand that. But I'll play Alp to end the game. And the final score. 252 for my opponent. 556 for me. A winning margin of 304 points. So a huge, huge win. Let's see what I missed. Wow, what a win. Sometimes when you win by so much, you wish you could have could win by a little bit less and have those some of those points available for the games that you lose by small margins. Anyway, that's not how Scrabble works. So here we go. My opening rack, and I play Mue, and I'm happy with that. Only four more points on offer. Opponent's rack plays Vox. Phew, no missed bingo here. And I play EN for 19. And I like that AERSU is quite a nice rack leave and none of the rack leaves above it are better. Opponent plays Brent. Now, again, no bingo. Phew, because this was such a bingo -y rack. And I think that shows there, there is no seven letter bingo. Otherwise it would play in row K. And I change just a U. Opponent's rack. He plays PHT. I draw a U. So I play a U. Opponent has in T. And I draw a U. Still no bingo. And this time I change UI because there's an I on the board. Opponent has MI. And finally. Dawners and Wardens, these are the column two plays, which I was concerned about because they opened access to column one. So I took a seven point sacrifice to play Dawners here, and I like that. Dawners doesn't provide terribly much. Opponent plays Eloin. And now the second back to back bingo. Well, a back to back bingo. A raise is for 67, also playable one square lower. Opponent's rack plays Yo and out drags the only bingo, so that's three on the trot. Opponent plays V Day. Now, did I miss a triple triple? No, I didn't. Fantastic. So my play isn't down here, but I think it must score the same. It does, 74 points, and that was the most that was on offer. Gosh, well, that was agony waiting for that bit of analysis because the, the rack was so good, and I knew I wasn't spotting all of the eights. But that really, even without it being a triple-triple, it was four bingos on the trot, and I have a 150-point lead. Opponent with a grim rack plays Oboe. And I play F for 42 and a good rack leave. Opponent with the Q for quite a while plays Vela. And here we go. I have Chiragra for 86. So, delighted to spot that. I think the cheer is to do with your hand and the Agra might be to do with arthritis. I think. Because I think... Chiral means right-handed or left-handed or something like that. And I mention that just because it's one way of learning difficult words is if you can have some understanding of what the component parts mean so it's not just a random set of tiles. Now, I lead by 250, opponent's rack, which is awful, plays way. 
I played Duke, G14, in that spot. Wow, so that was the highest scoring spot for Duke. Opponent now does finally dump the queue. Bag's empty, he's got catalogue, nowhere for it. I played Dursey for 32. Well, interesting, I, I did have two outs for Alpi. I had Alp and I also had Piley, but of course opponent has blocked Piley with Q, so it's possible. Well, after Dursey, I'm providing a U for PUL, so I do still have two outs. Now, what could opponent have done? He he passed for some for some reason. Yeah, this you see here he could have got twenty eight for Kagul a twelve. All of his big plays are created by Dursey, so it's possible that an alternative play to Dursey would have been significantly better. But I think you would need to run this through Quackle to identify just how how bad Dursey was and what the the better alternatives were. So opponent does pass. I've got Alp, but I also have Plu. And Alp, bottom left. And pull C10 th through the U. That's pull and Plu. So, what a game. I've been on the receiving end of quite a few losses recently. My rating has crashed from nearly 1900 to getting towards 1700. That's just variance. And... You've just got to expect it in Scrabble and and ride your way through it. And it's inevitable, especially in a very long series of games. But having said that, it's still always great fun to win a game and huge fun to win by a margin of 300 points. That doesn't happen very often. So many thanks to my opponent for a good game. I hope you enjoyed watching that game and I will see you next time.